Husband texted me yesterday. Yeah. He is very excited. Can't wait to be down here. Um, he has a great program that their church has started. And uh, I'm going to say it wrong if I say it at all. So, But it is basically an apostolic drug rehabilitation center. And uh, they're going to have several. He'll probably have several of those young men. Amen. They made it where they live there. They work there. And uh, they help them. And the way they help them, amen, is not just by putting them through a program. We know that the programs are good in their place, but it's the power of the Holy Ghost. And so I, I'm looking forward to hearing more about that. I, I've got a feeling those young men are going to come in here. Just something about when you've been set free. So, we are thankful that that is taking place. Don't come Sunday morning unless you want to open the door to turn the AC on. All right. I probably will not be here. But uh, we do encourage you to come and to uh, get here a little early to pray. I still believe in early prayer. Amen. So things I used to do, I don't do no more. 
Places I used to go, I don't go anymore. Amen. I've been regenerated by the blood of Jesus Christ. And when I'm filled with His Spirit, oh, praise We want Brother Thomas to come tonight. And I know that we are helping him. He is helping us. Amen. Praise God. Brother Isaiah, good young usher, he's taking good care of us tonight. And everybody say, God bless you, Brother Patterson. God bless you, Brother Patterson. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. I'd like to start out tonight by saying that this has been an experience. But the more I study and the more I learn, the closer I'm getting to my God. That's what I wanted because I'm learning. As you're learning, I'm learning. Sometimes we sit on a pew and we go to church and we forget what we're really here for. And we just make it a habit of coming. But it's get to get closer to God and be used of God. Because if we're not being used of God, we're not being used in His kingdom. We're not serving our purpose. I want to say what he asked me to do this first. My flesh, I won't say flesh because we all have it, kind of reared his ugly head and said, yeah, I can teach. But then when I started digging into it, I'm like, oh, Lord. <laughs> Lord, you're going to have to help me. And I'm just being true with you because you can't learn I don't tell you about what happens to me because it's not as easy as it looks to get up here and talk to you. And you think you can go on your own mind? You can't. Right. You got to study it. You got to understand it. And if God doesn't give you understanding of His Word, we can't teach His Word. Amen. And I pray, God, remove me from here and let you live inside and let you speak forth. Just use me as your vessel. Amen. Because that's where I want to be, is, is his vessel. Amen. But last week we talked about the grafting, as Pastor was saying. Once his DNA takes over, you start producing fruit. Fruit has several important characteristics. It's fragile. You gotta take care of what God gives you. All right. You gotta use it in the right way. Because you can hurt people by what you say. I've been guilty of that. I've said things to people and hurt them. Not intentionally doing that. But God, when you bring forth fruit, God wants you to use it wisely. It reproduces itself. Fruit can reproduce itself because it has a seed. And in us spreading the gospel, that's how our fruit is. Our, our fruit is re reproduced. You've got to give it to somebody else and plant it in their life. Show them how to be godly. Show them how to Use love. Be loved. You can say I love you. But that's a word. But actions are stronger than words. Brother Manuel, I've grown to love this man. Beyond what I could ever have thought. A lot of you I, I love the same way because I've interacted with you. I've, I've wept with some of you. I've, I've seen you go through hard times. So, I, I love it. And that's the key ingredient. And I know I'm going back over love, but I felt it was important because it is the very important. It's first in God's Word. In Galatians 5 and 23, it's 
says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So fruit is fragile. It reproduces itself. It's attractive. Sometimes you can just stand by a peach tree and you can smell the sweetness of the fruit. Or an apple tree, plum tree. When people are close to us, we should be able to be attracted. They should be attracted to the love of God in us. All right. Because we are a product of Him. Yeah. We are supposed to let the DNA take over and let God be reproduced through us. Right. If we do that. We don't have to worry about the other things that the failures in our life. God's going to use what you allow to grow to make you a different person. And it, it will find you as a different person. And people go, hey, you remember old Thomas Bernard? He's been big. I don't remember that. God can erase that stuff from your life. He has mine. I don't. I don't I looked at a picture a couple months ago and then I had a cigarette in my mouth and I don't even remember smoking. That's how good God is. He took that away from me. He took the desire away from me. That's right. <clears throat> Number three, or four, it nourishes. Fruit nourishes your body. It has certain characteristics in it that it it helps you. Your immune system, it helps different things. And we nourish. If we have the right attitude, love, joy, peace, we are going to nourish other people around us. We'll help them grow and be better people for God. That's what we're here for. We're supposed to be God's help, or not help, but his product, his fruit. This is who we are. This is who God designed us to be, to, to minister to the lost. Because people are dying and going to hell every day, and it's sad. I want to I wanna reach everybody I come in contact, and the more I study about uh, his word, the more I want to become more like him, and to to be used of him, so I can win souls and help him, or so he can work through me to win souls. I can't do it without him. <clears throat> John thirteen and thirty five. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. We've got to learn to love one another. No matter where the people come from or who they are, what they look like. Right. We just got to love them. That's all he asks us to do. Is love. And in Galatians 5 and 22 through 23, Paul's not speaking of a series of fruits to be shared around. You have one fruit. You have joy. You have peace. It's a cluster. It all comes together. You're supposed to show the hope. Love, joy, peace, long suffering. You have to have them all in. You can't just choose one fruit. All right. That's it. God don't God don't work that way. He gives it to you all. But you gotta you gotta work for some of it too. You gotta pray, seek God's face. You gotta ask to help you because our flesh does not is not willing to do anything. If you don't keep it under subject, subjection, you can't do nothing. Only by the grace of God are we anything. So love. Love is transit, uh, translated in Greek word agape. There are four distinct words for love in the Greek. Eros was the word for romantic passion. The romantic and passion. 
Philia was the word for love we have for those who are near and dear to us, like our families, our friends. Story is the word for love that shows itself in affection and care, especially for family affection. And agape. Describing a different kind of love, Mama. it is love more of a, de a decision than a spontaneous heart, spontaneous action of the heart. Agape love loves no matter what, and it's not looking for anything in return. God, He loves us. All we got to do is ask Him for forgiveness, and He forgives us. It's, it's an amazing how Agape love, it, it's hard for me as a human to understand meaning of Agape love. Because it's, you can describe it as a, a mother and a father to their, their kids. They love their kids unconditionally, no matter what they do. But God even goes further than that. He died on the cross for us. That's, that's, that's Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness are counterfeit. all day, and I must know counterfeit of love among people. It's fake. You don't love somebody when you treat somebody like that. It's not love. Love is. I can only describe it from my personal view is my wife. Somebody's going to hurt her or I'll die for her. Because I love her unconditionally. I, I don't think I, I don't think about cheating on her. I don't think about fornication. I don't think about these things. Because I love her. I can't tell her I love her if I let that in here. Come on. Not that the devil ain't ever tried to slip it in there. Well, let's be real. But don't dwell on them things. You can't dwell on the things of the world anymore. Idolatry and sorcery are counterfeits of love toward God. He said, he doesn't want anybody loving anything but him. He's a jealous God. So if you say you love God and you love football and you go and praise football and you miss church all the time because you're going to a football game, that's idolatry. I'm sorry. You love your car more than you do God. If you're always spending more time in your car and cleaning your car more and you won't clean up to come to church or do what God wants you to do, that's an idol to you. I'm sorry, that's, that's just real stuff right there. I've been there. Man, I was a football. When I got on the road, come Sunday, everybody knew where I was going to be. But I fell in love with God. Amen. I fell in love with my Savior. And he's done things for me like he said. He's done things for me ain't nobody can do. And he knows the true me. He knows what I was. He knows how selfish I was. He knows what stupid things I did out there in the world that I am not a proud of. And I thank him for it every day because, man, how many times could I have been dead? And I could have been in hell burning right now. You think about that. You don't really realize how many times God has kept you from going to hell. Right, thank you, Jesus. It is, it's, it's, it's amazing. I remember when I, and I'm not doing this, I'm not going to say this to glorify the devil, but I want to, I want you to see things. I want you to see that 
Y'all have been in some similar thing places I have been. I have been in so drugged out of my mind. I don't know who and what I woke, where I woke up. I ended up in Florida one time. Didn't know how I got there. And now I think back up and I go, God, I'm so thankful. Yes, amen. It's so good to me. Hatreds, contentions, jealousy, outburst of wrath, self ambitions, heresy, envy, and murders, all opposites of love. Drunkenness, yeah. <coughs> and Ruby, there you go. Our sad attempts to fill the void that only God can fill. There's a hole in all of us that God can only feel. That's what we were doing out there, doing our drugs and our alcohol and running around. It's because we have this hole and we all wanted to be loved. And God's saying, I'm right here. You're doing it all wrong. But when we felt, when God brought us out of the darkness into his marvelous light, we really know what love feels. There's people out there in the world don't know what love is. They're still looking for it. Some of them have sat in this building and didn't realize where they were sitting or who was here. Let's go into joy. Joy is joy is a natural rendition, rendition to the work of God, whether promised or not. Joy, is it, joy expresses God's influence in the, in the earth. Romans 14 and 17, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. The, spirit, the Spirit's production can manifest it in several ways. The joy of deliverance. When God sets someone free, rejoicing in His order, in order, when he set me free, I shouted, spoke in tongues, and I was joyous. I'm still joyous. Amen. There may be days that are not the greatest, but he still has, I still have the joy of the Lord in my heart Amen. and my spirit. Joy, joy, joy. I'm happy. Not only just happy. But he gives me a joy that's uncomprehendable. It's kind of like joy and peace all mixed in one. I don't, I don't worry like I used to that I'm gonna go to hell or anything like that. I've got this joy. God's got everything. He knows where I'm going. He knows what I'm doing. He give me a wife that I love. Give me a family, a church family that I can shout with, dance around with. Amen. That's, that's Amen. joy. I'm happy. First Samuel two and one, and Hannah prayed and said, "My heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is is enlarged over mine enemy, because I rejoice in thy salvation." Hannah was filled with joy at her deliverance from her enemies. This is an example. Acts 12 and 14. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for, for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. She was joyful. She was excited, Peter. <laughs> The servant girl was overjoyed that God had rescued Peter from prison that she forgot. She, she was so excited she forgot to let him in. <laughs> That's pretty joyous. <laughs> yes, sir. The joy of salvation. Our greatest reason to be joyful is that God wants to save us and spend eternity 
with us. Nothing is greater than this. He wants you to go to heaven more than we want to go to heaven. Come on. Amen. Amen. <laughs> that seems funny. You know, as many times as I've messed up, he still wants me to go to heaven. That's right. He loves you. He wants us to go to heaven. He wants people to go to heaven out there that don't even know they want it. He wants them to go to heaven and don't even know what heaven are. Yeah. Is, I mean. They don't even know what it is. Help me reach them, Lord. It's my prayer. Help me reach them. Help me get into the shadows where I need to be, where the people live that are in the dark hours of their minds and their hearts, where I can reach them, Lord. Use me to reach them. Yeah. It's important. There's, I know people that are drug addicts just like I was. And I want to be able to reach them. I want to be able to, if I have to crawl to them, I want to be able to crawl to them and tell them there's something so much better. Amen. There's a high that you can't imagine. Amen. It's a high of the Holy Ghost. Amen. There ain't nothing I've ever done that's better than that. Luke 15 and 7. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. All of heaven is joyful when one person is saved. When one person is pulled from the hands of the devil rejoices. I remember when we were baptized Sister Sanchez's dad over here at the nursing home and seven hours later he went home to be with God. Heaven was rejoicing. The devil thought he had him until the last minute God said, right, that's mine. Hey, that's mine. That's my child. That was a joyful thing. Yeah. And he's been joyful ever since because he sure is rejoicing now. <laughs> amen. Amen, amen. Acts 8 and 8. And there was a great joy in that city. Just giving you Bible references to go look up and, and read for yourself. And there was a great joy in that city. Yes. The people of Samaria were joyful as they heard the gospel and saw God's power in healing the sick. Acts 13 and 52, and the disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Ghost. See, that comes hand in hand. When God fills you with the Holy Ghost, He gives you love, He gives you joy, and He gives you peace. Those are things God gives you with the Holy Ghost. But you got to work to keep them. Because if you don't pray and you don't talk to him and you don't do those things, you're not going to keep your joy. You're going to fall away or you're going to rot off the vine. He grafted you in, but it's your job to work at it, to stay, to pray, to fast, yes, sir. to talk to him. You live in somebody's house and you don't talk to them and you don't pay your rent. They're, they're going to kick you out. It's the same thing with God. He wants you to talk to Him. He wants to be your friend. He wants to be your, your lover, your spiritual lover. It's, it's, it's all designed. we got to get it here. Sometimes we sit on the pew and we don't understand what God really wants for us. God wants you to love Him. And he will show you love more and joy more than you can ever comprehend. Amen. Amen. The joy of God's presence. The Holy Spirit draws us to God, in whose presence we can be. We can know true true joy. Psalm 16 and 11. 
Thou wilt show me the path of life, and thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Joy. I love to be joyful. Nobody likes to be around somebody that's always down, beat up. Nobody. That's why God puts us in joy, uh, gives us joy. All right. We're going to talk about peace. First, for God is not not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. All churches. The life of the Holy Ghost filled person should not be marked by chaos or confusion in their marriage, their finances, or their relationship. God doesn't work with confusion. Shouldn't be none in your life. You, you can give it to God. Amen. Let God take over it. Amen. He'll take over your finances. He will take over your love, your, your relationship with your wife or your husband. Yes. He can renew it all. And make it better Amen. if you will let him. Thank you, Lord. You've got to let him. Yes. You gotta let God in in order. If you reject the DNA that God is trying to transfer to you, you're gonna wilt off and fall off the vine. But if you are willing to accept that and let him change you, it's kind of like a blood transfusion. And let him transfer his genes to you, the amazing thing happens. All this comes, love, joy, and peace comes right away. Takes over. You go home and sleep like a baby. Instead of worrying, where am I going? Am I going to hell tonight if I die? It gives you peace. Not saying that life will be a bed of roses, but peace should reign in the home and in the relationship. Amen. John 14 and 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Amen. Colossians 3 and 15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Amen. Romans 8 and 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Peace. I know I've been a backslider. I know what peace God is. It's something I longed for the whole time I was out of church. Because it's not just about sleeping, or it's just a peace that knowing, man, if tomorrow my truck breaks down, or things go wrong tomorrow on my job, that God's still in control. Yes, He is. And He will take care of me. Yes, he will. He's not going to let me go down. He's going to pick me up, stand me back on my feet, and say, son, keep going. If I lay there and wallow in it, and I won't allow his hand to pick me up, I won't grab a hold of that hand. He has no choice because he can't go against your will. But he will give you peace over everything. Tell you a story. I, me and my wife, everybody knows we sold our house. I was talking to him one night and I asked him, like, why am I so stressed out? He told me, straight up, just like I'm talking to you, there's too much junk in your life. Get rid of it. You don't have enough time for me. 
He knew where my heart was because he knew I wanted to draw closer to him. And when he told me that, he gave me peace. I didn't have to question it. I went to my wife. I told my wife. My wife goes, yeah, God's been talking to me too about that. So we went to pastor. Told pastor. Pastor said, well, go ahead. It was just like, Everything was peace. There was peace in everything we did. Every time we took a step, God opened the door. We just walked in. When we sold our house, it was on the market one day at some. The people didn't even come and look at it. But that's what peace of mind did for us because we knew we were following what God told us to do. Amen. And there's houses out there that are still for sale that haven't sold yet. Our sold first day on the market. That's only God. Amen. You can't tell me that's not God. The people didn't even look at the house. They gave us an offer before they came and looked at our house. They sent it on the internet and gave us a, uh, an offer. I was like, me and, me and my wife just looked at each other like, wow, this is awesome. You know, because when you trust me, God. Amen, amen, brother. Thank you, Jesus. He will take care of you. Thank you, Lord. He knew we were doing it because we wanted to draw close to Him. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And He said, I'll take care of it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's amazing. Yes. Yeah, I can't see. <laughs> He's just an amazing God. If you give Him a chance, He can change your life. Yes, sir. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you for being my friend. Philippians 4 and 7. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. That scripture really says it all. Because it does surpass our understanding. The Greek word for peace is chara. And it means not just freedom from trouble, but everything that makes a man or a woman their highest. You want the best. It wants, makes the best for them. That's another word, but I wasn't going to try to say it. Here it means tranquility of the heart which derives from an all prevailing conscious that our lives are in God's hands. If God is peace, then to know God is to bask in His presence. The closer we draw to Him, the more of peace we can enjoy. Limiting peace can be compared to our flower petal can be compared to a flower petal unfolding in the morning sunlight. The petal of peace in our life unfolds as we learn more about God. We discover His character is always faithful. We experience His continual goodness. Psalms 100 uh, verse 5 For the Lord is good His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. We learn to bask in his open will with love for us. Romans 8, 38, 39. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. We refuse to allow ever-changing circumstances to determine our level of commitment. Relying instead upon the characteristics of God that never changes. He's always the same. He always loves us. When things happen, He puts peace in your life. 
where you can walk through the valley without a problem. My God is amazing. Amen. <laughs> Malachi 3 and 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. He changes not. He's always the same. Joy and love. God is good to us, be church. He takes care of us when we don't deserve it. But the amazing thing of all this is we were once blind to all this. And God has allowed us to see it. Yes. And uses us for his good if we will allow him. I thank God for being able to stand here and talk to you. But I asked him every day to, to give me more understanding of his word. And he's doing it through the study. So if I have anything that I could tell you, study the word of God. Open the, do open the door for him to put more understanding in your life by reading his word. It has helped me in my walk with God tremendously here just in the last four weeks. It makes me want to become a better person and not just jump up to get mad at any old thing I can do. I mean, I can, I have, it happens. It's, it's amazing what he does for us. Brother Bob Garner. Praise the Lord. Let's clap our hands to the Lord tonight. walking and living for the Lord. When we have love one for another. It's hard to be angry at somebody you love. It's hard to lash out at somebody you love. If you truly love them. Amen. You know what I'm talking about. If you love your child, sometimes you may want to wring their neck. But you love them. Bishop McLean taught me something many years ago, and uh, he said when, when his son Orland McLean is now pastoring to do things to anger him to, to the point of wanting to spank him, he, he said, I, I wouldn't spank him. I loved him too much. He said, but I tell him, if you did wrong, you're going to get a spanking, but I'm too mad right now. But in a few days when I calm down, I'm going to spank him. Yeah. He said that was worse than yeah. just getting the spanking right there. Because you knew it was coming. But dad would not spank him when he was angry. He, he loved him. And, you know, so then after he spanked him, he would tell him he loved him and, and uh, pray for him. So there's peace in that. You know, if you just stay connected to Jesus. Through the power of the Holy Ghost. And let these fruits. Come on now. When you're living for God. These things are tender. Yeah. You know. My wife loves to have a garden. And uh, we're, we're working in the garden. and But there's one thing about it. We, we planted several plants this year. But not all of them have made it. Right. They started out. In a good place. We put them in the little planters. And we kept them inside and we kept them out of the elements and we watched them come up and they got to the right size and we had great hopes for them. But we put them in the ground and they just didn't assimilate to the new location. So they died. And some others have, have taken off. And uh, she told me last night we've already got about close to five pounds of green beans. Wow. Praise God. God. We rejoice in that. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. 
they, see, they tend to do good, and, and other things are doing well, and we're watching it, but you, you have to take care of it. And, and the fruits of the Spirit, to me, you know, someone says, well, Pastor, I want to work in the gifts of the Spirit, and that's good, but before you can operate in the gifts of the Spirit, you've got to be able to operate in the fruits of the Spirit. You can't operate in the gift of the Spirit if you don't love your brother. If you're ministering out of hatred of the devil, you're not of the Lord. Well, I know that hurts somebody's feelings, but Scripture. Amen. Jesus even rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. Amen. But you've got to have the right spirit. You've got to do it in love. And when you're, when you're living in the Holy Ghost, you'll have joy. It's the joy of your salvation. Amen. Amen. A couple of Sundays ago, the Lord restored some joy. But don't think the devil wants you to keep it. He's going to do everything in his power to steal your joy. Yes, he will. He's going to try to be like them birds that I hate. Last year, Brother Waddy, I put some TPO stuff. I put tin pans. I put fake birds. I did everything I could to try to keep them birds from getting to my tomatoes. Because if they get to my tomatoes, they get to my salsa. Right. I don't want nobody getting to my salsa. What amazes me, they'll touch everything but a jalapeno. Right. They don't mess with my peppers. I thank God for that. Yeah. Amen. The Lord's already given me a double increase this year. i got six plants that are growing strong. We are going to have poppers in Jesus' name. But he's like that. He's like the bugs. you got to watch for the pestilence. you got to watch. i got a crazy squirrel that keeps trying to come in there, trying to check out the garden. I put a fence around it. My wife don't even want the dog in there. Amen. They dig up everything. But the point I'm making is, is the fruits that God gives you, just because you start out in this thing and you receive the Holy Ghost, you're like that plant that's got to grow. Yes, yes. And you have to bear fruit. Yes. That's why we, we're going to we're studying the fruits of the Spirit. Let the fruits of the Spirit just don't lash out at somebody. I know he'll be getting into that stuff later on, but you got to have the fruits in you. Yes. You say, well, I just speak my mind. Well, then you need to get more of the Holy Ghost in you. You need to approach your brother or sister with the right spirit. Yes, come on, you know? Praise God. And when you do, amen, everything will be fine. Amen. I can name some things. There's, there's somebody I think of, and if there's ever any kind of problem, or he feels like there's a problem, he never comes to me with a, well, you're wrong, Pastor, and I'm not. He, he comes to me weeping. He always comes to me weeping. And uh, he just wants to make sure that, hey, are we good? Is everything on? And that's an humble spirit. That's a fruit of the Holy Ghost. He's coming to me with love, not with a with a haughty spirit or, you know. Come on. Because you can, you can preach all day long, but if you don't have a right spirit, you're just as lost. Amen. Amen. So that's why this is an important part of our growing. New converts, get the fruits of the Spirit. And the way you keep the fruits of the Spirit is to stay prayed up, full of the Holy Ghost. Get things out of your life. There's weeds in your house. Everybody look at your name and say, there's weeds in my house. There's weeds in my house. That are going to hinder me. From growth. From growth. Amen. We need, that's why we, we come to church. What we're doing, we're doing some spiritual weeding. We're getting the grass out. Amen. We want our fruits to grow. Why? Because I definitely want to bear fruit for the kingdom of God.
or to continue to prepare for Pentecost Sunday. I don't know who all is going to be here. I just look forward to it. I know who we've invited. I know Pastor Husband and his church dismissed Sunday night so they could be here with us Sunday afternoon. So as soon as they get out of church Sunday morning, they're going to head down this direction. And so we're going to have many of them with us as well as the neighboring churches that we've invited. And uh, we are just going to have another great time in the Lord Amen. on Pentecost Sunday. Amen. Lord, I thank you tonight for your word and your spirit. Truly, Lord, this lesson is very important. For, Lord, I can prophesy, I can speak in tongues, but if I don't have love and the joy of the Holy Ghost and the peace of the Spirit within me, I am missed and lost, Lord. But thank you for the fruits of the Spirit. May they be evident in each of our lives. May we continue to grow, Lord, and produce fruit, and by producing fruit, produce seed to put in somebody else's life. And we give you glory and honor, Lord, for what you're going to do the remaining part of this week. And thank you for it in Jesus' name. Can the church say amen? Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed.